I have Falcon F-16 V3s, so that's what I set up everything with when I was playing around with this. But again, you don't need that type of controller to do it with this. Um, I'll get to something later on that's much easier if you have something like a Falcon or a Cult, but this will work with pretty much any controller out there. Um, you can use the auto size and full X-Lates control for all of this so that you don't have to worry about universes and star channels, and you'll still be able to use the visualize down here at the bottom. You don't have to use this, but you could. So when I'm going in, if I were to do that, no matter how I would do it, um, either this method or chaining them, which I'll show a little bit later. The first thing on my first port is I'm gonna put Snowflake one, then I'm gonna put the null pixels, and you can see I've got two of them here that go to, oh, first thing I do is all my models. I have those in there. They're all separated by my nulls. So I've got the snowflake, then I've got two null pixels, then I've got another snowflake, and then I've got my null pixels for this. My third, I keep going on. Where it gets a little tricky and you wanna pay attention to it is here, I've got this snowflake number three, then I've got my two nulls for this one. Then I got the one where I put them at the beginning accidentally. So I need to accommodate for those again, coming right after this and then number four. A lot of housekeeping goes along with this so that you make sure you get them in the right location. But as long as you're consistent with that and pay attention to everything, you're good to go. Keep in mind at the very end of this string, all of these are daisy chained together. I have two here. I made a model for this, but there's no reason that I had to make a model for that. I did it for consistency just because it was in there. But if you left these off and only told your pixel or your controller that you had 48 on the last one, like I said, it doesn't matter if this is two or 200, nothing after that point is going to light up, um, even if they're connected. So when you were, if you were to take that and upload to the controller, I'm not gonna go through how to do that. I'm talking about not pick, null pixels here, not setting up everything. When you upload to your controller, because everything was chained on this, the start channel up here is gonna be your start channel here. Everything is daisy chained. So your end channel here is gonna be your end channel there. All 300 lights are accommodated for in that. But really, I'm not gonna want all 300 lights to turn on. There's several in here that I'm not gonna wanna turn on. But for purposes of x lights and that, x lights is going to be telling them not to turn on, not my controller. My controller thinks they're all there. They're all there. If I push test on my controller, they're all going to light up. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be telling, in this way, x lights not to light them up. Same thing when I get down here to the other ones. Um, I get down to my letters for ho, ho, ho. Starts at the same thing, ends at the same thing. You can see how that's pushed. Any controller, you see, I'm not using the null pixels over here for everything. I'm just telling it where it starts, where it ends. I am accounting for what I don't want to turn on later. If you didn't want to use auto layout for this and you wanted to use model chaining, which is uh, kind of an outdated method now, but still works, you could do it using this method as well. Um, this over here on the left hand side is using the newer method where I'm assigning everything to the controller and using a visualize. Over here is where I'm chaining. So I'm telling my null pixel that it comes after the snowflake, my snowflake after this next null pixel. Keep working all the way down. You'll notice that the numbers here for the start channel and the end channel and parentheses are the same no matter where I'm looking. You can do it either way. Um, they're gonna act the same. It's whatever you're more comfortable with. I would push everybody if you're just learning to go with the left-hand side and use the visualize for it. Um, I wouldn't do it um, this way if I was just learning, it's kind of outdated, but for some of the people that don't wanna change, I'm including it for completeness. If you do a tools check sequence, which is in my opinion, one of the underutilized tools that people actually do, you go to that, it's gonna bring up something and it's gonna tell you if there are any problems in here. And the usual problems with that is multiple outputs, um, overlapping channels or non-contiguous channels for what we're doing here. There could be other ones that aren't associated with what I'm talking about here, but right now no problems found on any of those, the way I just showed you how to do it here uh, in either fashion with the visualize or not the visualize. So now the models are set up, how do you sequence that? Well, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you never turn on those null models. So when I created this, I put null at the beginning of those so I could easily find it. We never want to put any effects on any of these null pixels or, the, or they will light up. 
So this is where it's a little bit more work in Xlates when you're doing things to make sure that you don't put anything on those null models. Now, there's a couple of different ways to help yourself with that. If you go up to the top of Xlates, click on this little thing for display element or right click in one of these, go down to edit display elements. You go into your view, our master view, click on the little eye so that it, it turns grayish instead of the bright color. It will disappear. All these ones that are here are no longer here. They no longer show up. I can no longer put effects on them. So it's not really that complicated to try to do. They're not going to show up here. Why would I ever put anything there? I wouldn't. You just have to make sure if you have multiple views, you do that on all of them. If you start to put them in there and you accidentally put something on, that could be an issue. Um, let's say, for example, though, when you're doing everything, you draw a big box around, uh, oops, draw a big box around everything on here, select everything and put them in the all. And when you did that all, you got all your null pixels in with your all group, and then you put a whole house effect on that all group and they all light up. Well, you don't really want that to happen, but you don't want to go through because you spend a lot of time and you don't want to pick all of these out of there. There is another thing that you can do to make, if you just happen to accidentally put this into group or even worse, put it into multiple groups. What you can do is you can create a null pixel group. And what that is, is you just take all the pixels that would be null pixels for all those models that you made, make a group, and just put in the null pixels into that group. When you do that, what I would recommend is when you go into your display, um, edit display, put that group down here at the bottom. Why are we doing that at the bottom? Because the bottom will overwrite any effects that are above it. So what we can do is we can go through here, we can put an off effect on the bottom and it's gonna get rid of any effects that we might have accidentally had on those elements and anything else, turn them off. Uh, it's a simple way to make sure that those never turn on. So uh, this is kind of an example of that. Right now I have nothing on my null pixel group. I put a butterfly effect with my all and like I showed, all was including the null pixel models, let's say I accidentally did that, put them in there. It's lighting up like that, but that looks horrible in my display. I don't want that. If I have this null pixel group down at the bottom, I put an off effect down there. This overwrites that, turns off all the null pixels. This is exactly what I want it to look like. Um, one thing you do have to keep in mind, and as I said, if you were to test this from your controller, your controller does not know that these are null pixels, so it will turn them on when you're doing controller testing. Same thing with tools tests in Xlights. If you check these null pixel ones here, Xlights doesn't know just because you write null here that they're null and you don't want to turn it on. So as you're clicking through here, testing things, if null pixels are checked, they will light up in Xlights. Pay attention to that. If your null pixels are lighting up and you're going, why are they lighting up? Well, you told it to. Um, so that covers how to do it with what I call null models. It covers everything you want to do with those. You can definitely use that for all sorts of different situations. I'm going to go into what I call channel offset now, which basically skips over certain channels to account for the null pixels in there. Um, this is probably more familiar for people who have been with Xlights for a few years. You may have done that. You don't need to create null models to keep track of everything. You're offsetting things to keep track of that. The problem with this method is it doesn't work with every controller. It brings up a bunch of warnings when you do a check sequence. In my opinion, it's a lot more work to try to do of. It's not easily updated. It's generally just a pain in the butt to try to do. I would not recommend this one. I'm including it here only for uh, completeness because some people may have done this, but um, don't worry too much if you don't understand what's going on here because I, again, I would not recommend doing this. Um, what you're doing for this, if you did want to do this, is your start channel up here for the first snowflake would be just like it always was. Your end channel would be the same. But now instead of having a null model come after that to put it on a different thing, we eliminate this null model and we just tell this next snowflake to follow after the first snowflake. But the number seven here tells us that we're skipping some channels between the end of this one and the beginning of this one. And you'll see there, by doing that, we still get the same start channel on both of them, the 151 in parentheses. It accounts for the same end channel there, again, the number in parentheses. 
works out fine. We're just not having all of these null mo models in there. We're doing these offsets, which is the number after the colon. How do we do that? Well, if you click on your particular model, you go down to the start channel, click the three little dots that are here, it opens up this window and we tell it the offset. By default, this offset of the start channel is one. So the number ending here, or the number here will be one more than the number here. We don't want it to be one because we have null pixels. So we want it to be three times the number of null pixels that we have. In this particular case, it was two. So three times two, which is six plus one, which is the default there, making it seven after that. Um, so again, you need to know how many you have, where they're located, make sure you set all of these right to get all of these numbers to flow in the correct direction. Anything Jay-Z chain to a port would have to do that. This one had two null pixels, two null pixels. Here it's 13, which is four, because four times three plus one is the 13. This had one, this had one. That's why these numbers are different. Again, you can't really see anything in the visualizer with this. You're accounting for them all there manually. Um, some people did this in the past. It definitely works. It's just not an easy way to do it. Uh, like I said, if you do a tools check sequence, it's going to bring up all of these sorts of errors, telling you there's a gap in the models and where this gap is. You're not putting anything on these pixels. It gives it in two different locations. And it's even telling you over here, there's a small gap of 12 channel or 6, 12, 3, 9. Maybe these are null pixels. Well, they're null pixels. So why not just set them up as null pixels? Um, so check sequence is telling you this is bad. We don't like this. Don't do it this way. It will work. It will show you it on the visualizer. Again, it's still giving you warnings when you try to upload or down here that there's a gap that are showing up there. And it's putting all of these on different lines on the ports. Why is it putting them on different lines on the different ports? Because they have non-continuous channels and it needs to make a virtual string to be able to do that. Well, the problem is when you go to do the upload with that, you're, you're able to send it to a controller that supports virtual strings. And if you have something that supports virtual strings, it's most likely going to support null pixels. So why go through all this problem setting up, calculating all of that stuff when you don't need to because your controller supports it in a different fashion? And if your controller doesn't support virtual strings or null pixels, it might not support virtual strings, in which case this doesn't help you because it can't account for this gap and you need to go to the previous method that I talked about. So again, this is more for completeness. Really, I wouldn't use this method. It's in there for completeness of the presentation, but um, if you don't understand it, don't worry about it. Don't use it. Let's just skip. Uh, it will upload, however, if you are trying to put this onto something that supports virtual strings, it will upload just fine. And you'll see that the end channel here matches that. We go to the start channel of the next one, lines up just fine. It'll all upload. It's just not a great way of doing it. Um, I wouldn't do it, but it will work. Um, You'll also notice that in X lights, it will not have the RGB on the nodes that you didn't use because they're skipped. So when you go to do your channel testing, they may not show up here. You can see that there's a, it ends at 297, not the other. You gotta be careful when you're testing what that is and isn't gonna light up. It does tend to confuse people quite a bit. What I would recommend for setting up the null pixels, if you have a more modern controller, um, definitely your um, Culps and Falcon controllers is use up the null channels on the controllers to be able to do that. Um, it's the least amount of work. You don't have to account for any extra models. You don't have to have channel offsets. X lights will upload. I didn't put it in here. You're not going to get check sequence errors. Um, the only cons really to it are that you have to have a controller that supports not null pixels, which many people do. And the null pixels are only before each model. It doesn't put them at the end, which it's just a little bit of housekeeping, not really a problem. It's just something to pay attention to. So this is my same string of uh, lights. I just rotated it. This would be my first snowflake. This is my last snowflake. When I rotate it in there, it's just so I can show that when I have snowflake one, I put that in like usual. I don't say null pixels because there's no null pixels before it. Snowflake two here has two null pixels between it and the previous one. So I accommodate for those two here. Same thing with this one, it has two. When I get between three and four, the null pixels are before Snowflake 4, so I put four null pixels there. 
Number five, there's one null pixel between four and five. I put it on Snowflake 5. You just continue down that way. You probably won't have a nice picture like this to be able to say, hey, this is where they all want to go. But you kind of need to pay attention to the, your, what you're doing. It's all about your housekeeping for being able to do that and send that information. Again, when these here are in there, when I was doing a model of it, I created a null model for these. When I'm doing this situation, there's no model after that. So this, these two pixels don't get accounted for in this whole setup here. And that's why you'll see if you compare this to previous slides, there's a little bit of an offset because I was accounting for these pixels before and telling them not to turn on. Where in this, I'm just saying, I only have this number of pixels, um, 298, I think, as opposed to uh, 300. So these just aren't in there. We don't need to account for them, but they're not gonna turn on. So that's not a problem. Um, and you'll see that the numbers here, two null pixels here. My channels are gonna be a little bit different. Before I was accommodating for these null pixels when I was sending it to the controller. So um, the channels from 145 to 150 were actually being used by the controller, just told never to turn on. Now I'm not sending that data out to them um, through X lights telling them not to turn on. The controller is more or less handling that. I'm just over here saying, yep, let's go right from the next thing, 144 to 145. So you'll see that the end channels on here don't align, but that's okay because we're accounting for it with the null nodes. Again, you can use your controller settings with the full uh, x lights control for your visualize. It'll handle everything itself. You'll see when you put them on here that you will get different um, lines showing that you need virtual strings for this. And that's because if you hover, hover over one of them, you'll see there's null pixels on there. And that as I'm going down this, a lot of my null pixels are changing from one to the other. That's why they're jumping down to different lines all the time. I have uh, different numbers between all of them. If you had it the same, you may be able to combine some of these onto a single line, but virtual strings don't cost you anything. So there's no problem to do that. Check sequence, if you do a tools check sequence, it's gonna like this. It's not gonna give you any errors, no problems found on every line. That's a really good thing. That's what we like to see. Um, you don't need to do anything with your views for this like you did in the first method. Everything's accounted for in x -Lights, sending it to the controller to tell it, we don't need these models. You don't have to worry about putting anything at the bottom for it. You still could do that if you wanted to, but you have no, no models to assign for that. So what would be the point? So um, the most important thing you have to do with this is anything that you put under controller connection on your um, models there means nothing when you don't send it up to your controller. So you put it all in X lights, you put your three null pixels here, you put your check, you put your three, you told it that's what you're gonna use. If you don't save it and then push, or as Daryl Irwin always saves, save, save, push, push. If you don't send this information to your controller, it's not gonna do you any good. You have to send this information for your controller if it's under controller connection or it's completely meaningless. So make sure you do that step. Very, very important to do that step. When you send it to your controller, it's gonna look a lot like it did in x -Lights. I'm just showing here, the start channel is the same, the pixel count we don't see here, but the end channel is the same. Over here, the null pixel with the number of two. If you go down to the candy cane two, it's showing the same thing. Same start channel, same end channels, number of null pixels. Works very easy, easy to do. Another thing, uh, so that's the, the methods for doing them if you're using regular models. If you're doing a custom model, occasionally you may want to put a null pixel in the middle of a custom model. That gets a little bit tricky. You can't do it in a non-custom model because it's accounting for all of those. You would need to somehow manually account for that. But a custom model, sometimes you could do it. And a reason this for this is sometimes there's a long distance between pixels when uh, coral vendors have cut them out that you would need to cut and splice. Instead, we can throw a couple of null pixels in there and do the same thing. There's also things, uh, a couple of people I've heard in the x -Lite Zoom room that when they did something like on a fence or something, something blocked one or they needed to go somewhere. So they laid out like a fake matrix and they just skipped a couple of channels. It's all perfectly well and good. And you can do that just fine just by skipping numbers in a custom model. So here's one, this is um, from Bascoyo. I think it's the old DIY lighting uh, tree. 
there's a big distance between pixel number 12 and pixel number 13. If you wanted to, you could cut the wire there, splice in some longer wire, go from 12 to 13, um, make that correction, gonna work just fine. If you didn't want to, and you know, hey, maybe I can just th leave a couple of the pot pixels in the back here, make them all pixels, not wanna turn on, um, that's all well good, well and good and keeps you from saving everything. If you do a wiring view on this, you'll see it looks pretty good for the most part. Everything looks good except for that long line between 12 and 13. That's where I want to say, yeah, I want a couple of null pixels in this area here. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, basically, you just skip the numbers that you don't want to light up. They'll physically be there, but you don't want to put the number in numbers into the model because if you put them into the model, then they'll light up. So when I'm doing this, I let's say measure this out and I knew number pixels number 13 and 14, I can put in the back here, don't want them to line up, light up. So I don't have to splice. I'm just gonna leave a gap. I'm gonna go from number 12 to number 15, um, telling 13 and 14 not to light up. If I do a tools check sequence, it's gonna warn me I'm missing these nodes. That's all fine and good. It's a warning, not an error. And it's warning to let me know there's two models or lights in here that aren't gonna light up. That's what I want in this particular case. I want them not to light up because they're behind the model just saving me from doing my splicing. Keep in mind when you do that, if you do a wiring view for this, the wiring view does not follow exactly what is shown in here. The wiring view is only showing pixels that are in the model that are going to be lighting up. So you'll see it shows from 12 to 13 here, but 12 to 15 here. That's a known thing. It's going to do it that way. It's going to work just fine. It just looks a little goofy and that'll mess people up. So make sure if you're going to um, edit a custom model to have these gaps in there, when you look at your wiring view, know where those ones that you're not going to want to light up are and make sure you install them properly. Otherwise, you're going to run into headaches. Um, you'll notice here too, when this one up here is with the extra ones in there, or I'm sorry. I forget which is which, but your, your start channels here will be the same. Your end channels will be different because that's using it. This one here is with the two nodes in there that the warning is gonna tell you it's missing. If I didn't have it in there, and you'll see I uh, tree with the nulls in there, it's using two more channels. It's just not outputting data to them to tell them to light up. Over here, we're not outputting to those two channels and they're not gonna light up because they don't exist there. So. This will tell you that, yeah, you do have them in here because this is more pixels than are actually lighting up. They're just null pixels inside a custom model. Whatever you do, I do not recommend starting a custom model. If you have null pixels at the beginning of this string, don't start your custom model with a number other than one. This makes things very, very confusing because when you do this, I've chained these two models together there's a gap between the end of this model and the beginning of this model. When you get into testing to do a bunch of things, that's very confusing. And if you come into the Zoom room for help a lot of times, we're looking at this going, wait, you're mixing pixels. What are you doing? Where are these ones at? And maybe you didn't mean to start this at number six. You really wanted it to be at number one or you set something else. This just creates a lot of headache. Always start your custom models at number one. If you have null pixels before a custom model, set those with the null nodes over here like you would any other model. Don't do it to accommodate in your model. That just drive, uh, makes more confusion than it's worth and it's not worth the hassle. So this is bad, don't do it, it makes us cry. So there are probably other ways that you can handle putting null pixels into X lights. Um, it just creates all sorts of, uh, I get added. There's other ways that you can do it. There's always different ways that you can do anything in X-Lights. Feel free to try the different ways to do it. I covered the three most common. Again, only two I really would recommend doing. Um, but feel free to mess around. If you're not in a crunch, you're not really going to break anything. You might find a better way than I did to do it. Um, those are just the ways I know, the way I recommend for people to do. So I hope that I didn't bore you too much going through 45 minutes of how to add an old pixel when most people would tell you just cut it out or check this little thing. But hope you learned some stuff. And if anybody has any questions, um, feel free to ask away now. 
Everybody should be able to unmute if you have a question uh, or type it into chat. And we're a few a little further back in chat. Uh, one question from C. Jones regarding uh, whether sand devices would work with the method. I think that was the method regarding null models. Um, I'm not sure when that got asked, so I'm not sure with what method, but basically the first method will work with any controller I'm aware of. The SANS device, I don't know if that supports virtual strings and null pixels. If you bring it up, it's pretty clear when you look at it, if it supports it or not, it'll say null, so. Yeah, the SAN devices doesn't. Your, your second method, John, I'm not sure it would work. Um, the way you're uploading, um, the way it gets uploaded as separate virtual strings, this is where you start the model with an offset. Right. Because you did the upload to a controller that supported virtual strings, it will actually recompress that gap. Oh, really? Yeah, it will. It'll work okay if you manually define uh, the, the string on the controller to encompass all of the models. But if you do the upload to the controller, the upload will recompress things. Okay. Well, another reason not to use that method then. <laughs> Thank you. And now I'm just seeing your uh, your comments in chat too. So, so did, did I get everything else right? Yeah, the other the other challenge you run into with your last method, where you leave gaps in custom models, is it makes sub modeling harder because sub modeling is always done using the offset of the nodes from the beginning of the model, and so your gaps throw out your numbering, and it makes life hard. Oh yes, good point. Speaking of that, there's a question about some models in chat there. So I had a question. Go ahead. Sure, go ahead. So in one of the other rooms that were doing singing faces, um, they had the, the light bulbs from um, Boscoyo and there's a big gap in the wiring. Um, I think it's around the eyes. Um, way longer than four inches. So we could we could just do the null um, pixels for that. That is one case, like Keith said, it makes the submodeling kind of confusing. Um, what happens is with something like a singing face where the faces are all defined, if you add in those null pixels, you may have to change all your submodels to account for that. Okay. So you could do it that way, but it's probably going to be more work in that case than just um, splicing in that extra bit of wire. Okay. All yeah, right. It'll work. You just got to get it right. That's all. Yes. Okay. So. All right. Thank you. Sure. And I'm looking, I see a thing. Uh, I have a standard talking sprot prop, but can use null pixels because of the distance. Do I have to change a custom model? No, if you have a, a, a prop that you're just having null pixels at the beginning of, you don't need to change that, it, whether it's a um, custom or a regular one and the nulls are at the beginning, just add them to, to the beginning using the, the null. So basically, I, I got in the, this chat a little bit late. So basically if we're um, hooking different, you know, the same type of prop to another one. So let's say we have four or five snowflakes, then we're going to have these pixels in between that we don't want to light up. So we're going to use it for that, correct? Yeah, that's a common use for it. Okay. So I created a way, oh God, late last year, where you can export and then re-import a submodel onto a model and if you export it using the standard model, then renumber everything to put your gaps in and then re-import the submodels. From memory, it will it will define the new submodel using the new model numbers, which might help make life a bit easier. It's a, I actually did it to support those sorts of use cases. Okay, so if we were running these snowflakes off the same port, then they they would just be a continuous 
they would be continuous with the pixels, correct? Yeah, sorry, I was I, I was more talking about the the whole submodeling impact and uh, and what would happen with your submodels on your faces and the like. I mean, it's true on any model, but uh, sorry, I I kind of lost that question. Okay, well, I was just saying that if you if you have all these snowflakes, you know, on the same port, then we would have to designate these gaps with these null pixels yeah just like john showed i mean john, okay. john showed putting the null mod, null nodes between his snowflakes um if, if they be if they're between models you just use one of the methods that john has shown if they're inside the models then you need to play with the numbering of the custom models again like john showed okay right but then you have to go back and fix your sub models and and like i say there, there's there's two ways to do that. One is to manually go and adjust everything. And the other one is to export the submodels before you make the change and then re-import them after you make the change um, where they will map onto the same nodes. Okay, sounds good. All right, do we have any more questions? Looks like uh, art. Just to be clear, when you define null pixels on your controller port, they are still included in the port pixel count. Is that correct? Yes, you won't see them in there, but they will count towards your um, number that you're um, outputting. Um, and what that comes at, like with the Falcon controller, your sliders and that, it can goof keep people up because you think you only have, let's say, 300 pixels on something. But if you had a bunch of null pixels in there, they kind of impact that and can throw things off. So, yes, they count, but they're not as clearly counted. That's why you want to use those F amps. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Much easier. And, and just to give you a little background, the reason that there is is because data is still flowing out to those pixels where the data is just telling them don't turn on, but it's still data and it has to be accounted for and it still has to be streamed. Whereas a amp is just taking that signal, boosting it. It's not telling it to turn on or off because it can't turn on or off. It just sits there and boosts the data where even a null pixel still has to get that message that no, I don't want you to turn on. And that can be either on the x late side of things or the controller side of things, but either one is put putting out something to tell it that. All right, any more questions? Still got a few minutes. Uh, I have a question. Um, if I'm uh, doing this export import thing, when I do an export, and I haven't done this before, is it in XML format and edit that? Or what kind of format do I have to edit? Are you talking about for the custom model that Keith was talking about a few minutes ago? No, this is for the lady that asked about, in fact, I was asking about it, was I've got the singing face from Boscoyo and it's got a long distance in the middle. And so let's say I export that model and they say, you guys said to rearrange it. Uh, what uh, when I export the model? What am I rearranging? What what kind of format is the file that that's exported? You should, if you're going to change anything, do that within Xlights in the custom. Um, it, it'll export an X model file, mm -hmm. and then you can re-import that X model file. You don't want to get into an XML file and editing that. Generally speaking, unless you really know what you're doing, and most people don't. So when you bring up the custom model in X lights, there's three little dots you can click on there. It brings up a grid and that'll show you where your pixels are. Um, let me just go back here. It'll like bring up this type of grid. Model data, right? Is that what it is? Yes, okay. model data up at the top. And you can edit things in there. And then there are other features for changing your sub models in that. But again, with something like singing faces, because all of the faces are defined and you may have sub models defined, that may not be the easiest way to go. Um, 
So make sure you make a copy um, to be able to do that. And I, again, Keith was saying there he had another method, but I haven't used that method, so I can't really talk too much about how to do that. Yeah, well, to be honest, what I'm doing is, well, I've already gone through and put it together, and now I'm going to have to go in and do the soldering thing. You know, <laughs> it's the only way I could figure out to make it work. Gotcha. But I was hoping this would be easier. <laughs> yeah, it, sometimes it's it's not. But if you wanted to um, stop in the the Exalate Zoom room some evening, uh, probably not this weekend, but another time, we can take a look at what you have and usually come up with something that can save you, or at least make the minimal amount of work for you. Okay, thanks. Sure. All right, so we are in our last five minutes, so I'm going to stop the stream here shortly, but first, uh, uh, this is great information. Thank you, John D. This comes up quite a bit, so... Uh, People, uh, this will be recorded and available on YouTube as well as in the video section on xlights.org. So feel free to come back in and watch it again and get all this great information. So thank you, John D. And again, thank you to our sponsors, uh, Boscoyo Studio and RGB Sequences. And thank you for hosting and for uh, you, the host, the co-host, and uh, the help from Keith, who... For those of you that didn't know who that was talking, that's Keith, the main developer for X-Lights and uh, all around great guy helping out, stopping in our presentations. And then we'll be talking for probably the next several hours in other rooms later on.